Welcome to the ITDVDs.com YouTube channel. This is just a sample of the training available at ITDVDs.com. If you would like to see complete training, please go to ITDVDs.com. Now let's begin the sample. In this training, we're really going to focus on the specific steps and what it takes to upgrade Exchange 2007 to Exchange 2010. We're not necessarily going to get into hardware and capacity planning in this training. But we do have training, MCTS Exam 70-633, Designing and Deploying Messaging Solutions with Exchange Server 2010 on ITDVDs.com, that you have access to. And that training really gets into capacity planning and just planning your overall Exchange 2010 environment. But the nice thing about upgrading from Exchange 2007 to Exchange 2010 is none of the roles change. We have the same hub transport, client access, mailbox, unified messaging, and edge transport roles with Exchange 2010 that we had with Exchange 2007. So hopefully we'll just be basically replacing one server for another. And the upgrade to Exchange 2010 is a migration process. So it's not going to be a insert an Exchange 2010 DVD into your Exchange 2007 server, hit the upgrade button, and it upgrade and it does an in-place upgrade. It's definitely a migration. We need to build separate Exchange 2010 servers and migrate over to them. So the minimum requirements for our Exchange 2010 servers are going to be a 64-bit processor. The operating system needs to be Windows 2008 with Service Pack 2 or Windows 2008 R2. We need at least 4 gigs of RAM. And we need Windows 2008 R2 Enterprise or Windows 2008 Enterprise for database availability groups. And if you want to learn more about database availability groups, see, please see the Exchange 2010 High Availability Training on ITDVDs.com. But this is actually a pretty important step to the planning process in deciding what operating system do you put on the server you're going to install Exchange 2010. Do you put a standard edition or an enterprise edition? And the reason for this is if you use a standard edition and then later on you decide you need a database availability group, well, there's no upgrade path to an enterprise version. So you would actually have to install a whole nother uh, server, operating system, and exchange server and migrate over to that one. And that can be a big hassle, whereas just installing enterprise from the start is much, much easier. We can install Exchange 2010 on a virtual machine. There are a few requirements. We can use Windows 2008 with Hyper-V, Windows 2008 R2 with Hyper-V, or Windows Hyper-V Hyper Server 2008 and Hyper-V Server 2008 R2. So we can't use something like Microsoft Virtual Server. We can use third-party hypervisors. Some, some are supported, like uh, VMware ESX. Uh, you want to check Microsoft's website to see which ones are supported. The big thing about using virtual machines for Exchange 2010 is you can't use snapshots with them and you can't use thin disks. At least they're not supported. And one of the big reasons for not being able to use snapshots is it's uh, so integrated with other Exchange servers in Active Directory that you would have to take a snapshot of your whole environment to be able to roll back to it. So that's the main reason why it's not supported. For our Exchange 2010 environment requirements, we have all domain controllers need to be at least Windows 2003 with Service Pack 2. We need to have a global catalog server at every site we plan to have Exchange 2010. And our forest and domain functional levels need to be at least at Windows Server 2003. So once we've met all these requirements, then we're ready to begin our upgrade to Exchange 2010. 